Let me show you how to do uh, photoelectric effect uh, calculations. Okay, um, and these these are it's not exactly rocket surgery. These are these are pretty simple. Okay, uh, here's the idea: is that the uh, light, the energy from these photons coming in, according to Einstein. Okay, that photon energy is going to go to two places. Right, it can go to work. Okay, it can also go to to the kinetic energy of the particles. Right. Okay. So for example, if um, Let's suppose we have 10 joules, or I'm sorry, 10 electron volts, right, of energy in the photon, and the work function is 4 electron volts, right, then you could have 6 electron volts of kinetic energy, right, okay? If the photon energy is uh, 12 electron volts, and it takes, still takes 4 electron volts to remove the electron, right, that's what, that's what the work function means, right, then this guy is going to be 8 electron volts, right? Okay, so that's the basic idea is that it's conservation of energy. The energy of the photon goes into the work needed. This is called the work function. Okay, it goes into the work function plus whatever's left over can be given to the energy, the kinetic energy of these, uh, um, these photoelectrons. Okay, and that's the very best case scenario. Now, in, in reality, this is a maximum because it's not always 100% efficient, and so some of the energy is lost. This would be the maximum energy that they could have, okay? Work function is related to, like, the reactivity of the metal. Metals with a low work function actually are easy to remove electrons from, and metals with a high work function, it's hard to get the electrons from that. Uh, the reason that Einstein, of course, was interested in this is that this is a way to measure the energy of the photon. If you can measure the kinetic energy of those photoelectrons, right, we know the work function of the metal, and so we can, we can uh, measure that photon energy. Okay. Now, what's interesting or what's weird about these problems is that they look pretty formidable, right? Because we, we talk about something called a stopping potential. Okay. Remember that we reverse this potential. So these things are actually slowing down, right? So the way we do this is we turn that voltage up. We start at zero and we turn it up. And when we stop every single electron, right, then we've actually gotten the maximum energy. We figured out the maximum energy that they have. So for example, if I turn it up to uh, three volts, right? If that stops them, if that's the stopping potential, right? That means that these, the maximum energy that these have is three electron volts, okay? That's the notion, right? Or if, if, if I'd have to turn it all the way up to five volts to stop them, that's my stopping potential, the kinetic energy is five electron volts, okay? So th there we have it, right? There, that's some of the language. Oh, hey. Please call 5609. All right, good enough. That's going to be a more, a, you know, memorialized or something like that. Okay, so um, I'm going to hit the, the, the right arrow here, and, and there we go, right? So these are the formulas that they give you in the data packet. Uh, they don't help me out too much. Um, I suppose I use this one if I use any one. Uh, so this is obviously they're using Planck's, or not Planck's, but Einstein's formula for photon energy, HF, right? Okay, where does the energy go? It goes to work to remove the electron, right? Plus the um, what's left over goes to kinetic energy, right? Here they talk about um, here it's they, they they express the work function as Planck's constant times a minimum frequency, a lowest frequency, right? Okay, and the way that works is I mean let's suppose that the the work function is uh, uh, four electron volts, right? And if you're um, Photons have an energy of three electron volts, right? You know, how much energy does it? Well, they don't have any energy. The, the uh, electrons just get happy and excited, you know, but they, they don't leave home, okay? Uh, if I have, you know, if, if I then raise the, the photon energy to four electron volts, then it's possible that, you know, you could send some free, but they wouldn't have any kinetic energy left, right? They could be stopped by zero voltage, right? But if I, um, if I have uh, five electron volts, right? Well, that's going to, you know, gee, that's four electron volts plus we'd have to, it could actually fly through one volt of potential, and, right? Okay, so that lowest frequency is the frequency that has photons of an energy equal to the work function. That's how you would measure the work function using the photoelectric effect. Okay, now let me do some of these uh, uh, calculations for you, um, and you'll see that they're not really exactly rocket surgery. Okay, so here's our first one. Uh, metal has a work function of 3.25 electron volts. That's how much energy it takes to take an electron off the surface, right? 
Um, and then uh, the electrons have a stopping potential of 7.35 volts. This means that the kinetic energy of the electrons is 7.35 electron volts. Okay, it's as simple as that, right? Okay, and then this is our work function, right? So I'm going to set up our little expression here. The photon energy equals work function plus kinetic energy, right? Okay. So uh, photon energy is, let's see, the work function is 3.25 electron volts, right? The kinetic energy is 7.35 electron volts, right? Because they can fly through 7.35 volts before they're stopped, right? Doesn't that mean that our photon energy is, is this plus this? These are really pretty simple things, right? Okay, so 3.25 plus 7.35 is 10.6. Okay, so that is, that is not the wavelength of the light, that's the energy of the light in electron volts. Okay, so now all I have to do is figure out what that wavelength is, and that's easy, right? Uh, e equals uh, hc over lambda, right? So therefore, lambda is going to be hc over e, right? But I've got to turn that into uh, joules, right? So 10.6 electron volts times... 1.602 e minus 19, and that's joules per electron volt, right? So that times 1.602 e minus 19 is 1.698, 1, 2 times 10 to the minus 18th, and this is uh, now joules, right? Okay, so now we can figure out the wavelength, right? So that's going to be uh, plugging into this formula here. 6.626, that's Planck's constant. E minus 34 joule seconds, right? Okay, times the speed of light, so 3.00 E8 meters per second, right? Divided by this guy here. Here's our energy, right? Okay, so 1.69812 E minus 18 joules, and again, you know, the units uh, go away, joules cancels, seconds goes away, we're going to end up with meters, right? Okay, so this is um, 6.626 e minus 34 times 3e8 divided by the answer that I just got, right? And I get uh, 1.1706, roughly, right, times 10 to the minus seventh meters, and then if I want nanometers, which is 10 to the minus ninth, I go whoop, whoop, right, and then that's, uh, uh, I would be 117 times 10 to the minus ninth meters, right, which is 117 nanometers, okay? So basically the key for, for photoelectric effect problems is work in electron volts, right, and then you also have to be able to turn electron volts into wavelength, wavelength into electron volts. Okay, let me let me work out another example for you. Okay, so seventy point nine nanometer light strikes a metal. There's our work function, and we want to know what is the maximum kinetic energy in electron volts. What's the stopping potential? Well, they're going to be the same thing, right? Uh, if twelve point four volt electron volts is our energy, then we would stop electrons with twelve point four volts. Okay, so let's set this thing up. The first thing to do is to turn this wavelength. And we need to figure out the, the, the photon energy, right? So let's figure that out. Right? So energy equals uh, hc over lambda. Not in the data packet, right? It's just hf in the data packet, right? So 6.626 e minus 34 joule seconds, right? Times 3.00 e8 meters per second, right? divided by uh, 70.9 e minus 9 meters. Okay, so what is that? That is uh, 6.626 e minus 34 times 3 e8 divided by 70.9 e minus 9. Okay, do I have that right? I do have that right. Okay, so that is 2.8 uh, times 10 to the minus 18th joules. That's the photon energy, right? 
And then, of course, I'm going to divide by uh, 1.602 e minus 19. And that's, uh, what is that? That's uh, joules per electron volt, right? Okay, so divided by 1.602 e minus 19. And I get 17.501 electron volts. That's the photon energy, right? Okay, now I'm ready to apply the basic idea of the photoelectric effect, right? And that is that the photon energy turns into work function plus kinetic energy, okay? So now let's just figure this out. This goes where the photon energy is, right? So 17.501, and then the work function is 5.10, right? So therefore, let's figure out the kinetic energy. It's holy subtraction problem, Batman. So minus 5.1, 12.4, right? So the, the kinetic energy works out to be 12.4 electron volts, right? That means that the stopping potential, stopping, okay, equals 12.4 volts, okay? Because we're talking about electrons, right? An electron with 12.4 electron volts of kinetic energy can fly through a potential that's slowing it down of 12.4 volts. So, so that's the basic idea. When you do these problems, you want to do everything in electron volts. Okay? Don't do them in joules unless it's like some problem from the book where they give it to you in joules. Well, you can keep it in joules, but nobody does these problems in joules. They're all electron volts. And that's because work functions are in electron volts. And photon energies, when we talk about them, are in electron volts. And the stopping potential is, by its very nature, because we're talking about electrons going through volts, is in electron volts. Okay? So turn all wavelengths into electron volts, and then this is a very simple relationship. Okay? I'm about to hit the right arrow here. Okay? This is just a chart that I found off some internet site that had uh, work functions of metals. Um, so there they are. These are all these are all volts, okay? Electron volts, electron volts, right? Etc. And notice that uh, cesium has a fabulously low. Okay, it's got a fabulously low work function. That means it's extremely easy to take electrons off of uh, cesium, right? It's, it's, it's given off those electrons. Lithium isn't much better, you know. It's casual about its electrons. Gold, on the other hand, really, really wants to hold on to its electrons. So gold doesn't react. Okay, it's very hard to make gold react with stuff, right? Silver, though, we all know that silver tarnishes, et cetera, et cetera. There's lead and tin and uh, chromium maybe is a little better than silver, et cetera. Okay, so there you have it, right? Um, I'm going to work out some examples. Do as many as you need to understand the photoelectric effect.